Hi, welcome to the next session of SAP FICO training. We will continue the accounts payable continued part where in the last topic we completed the cash discount for outgoing payment and now we will be looking after the creation of vendor master records. Now vendor master records can be created with the transaction code FK01 and once a vendor master is created at times we need to make certain changes in the master so for change of vendor master the transaction code is FK02 and to just display the details of vendor master we will be using FK03 so first we will be going to FK01 for the things let's see so as seen we will first go to create the vendor master with the transaction code FK01 so moving to SAP, we'll run the transaction code FK01, enter. Now once you enter, you can see the screen comes up with you is vendor, company code and account group. Now as you would remember, we have created different account group. Account group means the vendor account group. And if you want a vendor to be created in, in that particular vendor account group, you have to assign the account group to that so 1200 is the company code the next is the mandatory part is account group in which vendor account group you want this vendor to be created so you have to look after to that now for that you can go to the F4 key in the keyboard where you can see how many vendor groups we have created earlier so to just check back what we created was what we created was a service vendor group so to create any vendor in the service vendor group you can double click on the service vendor and once you have created you don't have to put anything on the vendor particular on the vendor field why because to service account group we have assigned a number range if you remember in the steps of configuration that number range means that number range with that particular number range a code will be generated to the vendor over here so we don't have to fill this vendor code over here from our side it will be an automatic system generated code so once you have filled the company code and the account group we need to go to the next step that is enter now when you will enter to this the screen will take you to the next page and will ask you for the vendor details so over here you need to fill the vendor details if the vendor is a company or a code or a mister or what so over here I can put a company and we can uh, put the company as suppose uh, any service company we can take like suppose I take up as uh, TCS so TCS and in the same way over here also you can put up the same thing over here and you can put the address over here what the company address is in this particular details however these are optional part if you wish to um, put the address details it's up to you if you don't want to put you can skip the address as well but the mandatory part over here is this particular tick mark if you remember if you look after to this there is a tick mark on the country so where the comp you must have to select the country so for country you can go to F4 key on the keyboard and with that you can search the company from which for the country from which you are taking this particular vendor suppose I take the vendor from United States itself so we will be selecting the United States and then you can go to the reason as well the reason will let you know which country in the United States it will select the reason so in this you can have any of these particular part like Florida or any other Indiana anything as such suppose I take up as uh, suppose I take it as New York so I can double click on it and the New York reason code has been taken up over here in the same way you can fill the street number as suppose 121 I have filled up over here you can put any postal code digit in a city as well suppose city is New York so it's up to you whether you want to take these things or not but the country has to be specified it is a mandatory part further coming down 
you can put further vendor details in that language telephone number of the vendor mobile number of the of the vendor if any any specific person is there for that email id of the vendor if you take the email id later on you can you can auto generate various things directly to the vendor as well like invoices can be sent to vendor or any payment done automatic gen mails to, can be generated and can be sent to the vendor as well on the email ids so this is the first page now once you end done this first page then you have to click on the enter it will take you to the second page so select putting enter on it it will take you to the next page that is account control in the account control these they are different fields but we don't need to do anything in this account control part as these are not relevant as of now so moving to the next is again enter enter will take you to the next page again so enter now it will take you to the next page that is the bank details now over here you can fill the bank details of the vendor if you wish to so bank details can be filled over here over here you need to take the country then you can fill the company bank key bank account number account holder and all those details so that the payment can be processed to the vendor so that is over here can be taken up once you fill it these part then you can again select uh, enter from the keyboard it will take you to the next page and in the next page is contact person suppose you know certain specific people and that particular vendor to whom uh, you uh, you normally connect to so you can put those people contact details over here and the name of the person the telephone number and all those details can be taken up over here so that part it can be can be taken in this so contact person then enter again now when you enter it will take you to the next page that is accounting information now in accounting information mind it this reconciliation account is the most important part and you can see this is a, a tick mark over there so this tick mark we did when we created the account service account group and we made reconciliation account mandatory in the account settings in field status group if you remember so this part is very important where we will be selecting the the ledger which uh, on the basis of which all the vendor transaction will be taken in the ledger account so you can go for f4 key in the keyboard and you can see what are the different reconciliation account there so you can see only the domestic vendor account is there so we only created one reconciliation account for vendor it is domestic in the same way you can have multiple different vendor account depending upon your requirement and you can categorize those things accordingly so we'll be selecting this domestic vendor account double click so rec reconciliation account is selected now head office if there is any you can select that you can go to below like release group these are various other things which are not to be used now this can be used later on but right now the basic settings are is to select the reconciliation account now you can see on the screen there is one more tick over here the tick mark that means this is a mandatory part again so going to this again i am selecting the f4 you can take any any cash management group however this particular uh, cash management group relates to basically um, treasury module now over here i am selecting this first tab as a domestic payment ap so as a cash management group part so this you don't have to take these two things once you do this you have to save it so selecting saving it will get your vendor master created you can see the code has been generated with a four digit so this is how a vendor is created once you have created this vendor you can even go and you can display this vendor as well so to display the vendor the transaction code is fk02 sorry to change a vendor the transaction code is fk02 and to just only display it is fk03 so suppose i go to fk02 to just have a look at the vendor again so if you want to look at the vendor you have to select these tabs from here one by one or there could be an option of selecting it from here select all so select all will get all the fields selected then enter on, from, with the with the keypad keyboard 
and it will take you to the next page now you can see all the detail one by one one page to another page details are there suppose later on you want to change certain things in it you can change it like you can change the address you can change the company name even you, below you want to suppose you have messed up the mobile number or email id you can now update those things so anything which you have not filled earlier while creating the vendor right now with fk02 while changing the vendor you can update those things over here now so this is what can be done with this now again next screen you can see over here so again if you know the vendor uh, VAT registration number you can put the VAT registration number over here if there is any other changes to be done that can be done uh, then again you can go to the next screen again you can again add the bank detail if you want to if you want to delete that bank detail once you're filled you can delete that from over here as well so these are the options which are given to you with the change vendor option so again the next screen is again this contact people so you can change the contact detail of the vendor as well and now the reconciliation account and the cash management and even if there is anything which need to be updated in the future you can update those things under below right now you don't have to do anything so once you have done this you can save it again and the changes will be take taken place so that is it which has to be done while creating the vendor master now you can display the vendor as well with fk02 so for displaying the vendor you have to go to slash n fk03 and you can see you have to select the vendor right right now it is coming automatically whenever you create a vendor it automatically gets picked if you don't if you have not then you can go to this f4 tab and you can even search the vendor as well as per the company code so you can go to this vendor by company code so over here you can take the company code over here and then you can enter and number of vendors will come in it if there are many so in this company code we have just created the first vendor it is this otherwise there could be number of vendors so double click on this the vendor is selected then you can you can select these which part you want to have a check with and then enter keyboard with the keyboard now you can see these are display part moving to the next screen these all will be in a display mode you cannot do any changes to them you can just have a look to them that's it so these are three different transactions by which you you can have uh, vendor master records that is fk01 is for creation of vendor master fk02 is for change if any changes has to be done in the vendor master with respect to anything and fk03 is for display of the vendor master records so this is how you go and you make the vendor master and you can have it looked so once we are done with this particular vendor master records now moving to the next we'll be doing the unit testing now coming to the unit testing all the configuration related to accounts payable is done let's revisit once again to the accounts receivable configurations we did you can see this configurations vendor account group we have created we have defined a number range to to the vendor account group accordingly and if you just we have created the vendor master with 440 uh, million number was generated 4000000 and that that came up from this number range only if you go and check back again we'll see that that service vendor group has been assigned to that series and that is why that series has been generated when we created the vendor master records so that is it and the gl as a reconciliation account we created over here the same gl has been assigned to this vendor master so that the vendor is a sub ledger actually so the sub ledger whatever the transactions take place in the vendor that is a sub ledger will get automatically floated to the gl as well that is the ledger account by which we may basically prepare the financial statements so that was this we created all those things now we'll go to unit testing and we'll check that if we go for all these transactions in the system that is all these business transactions and if everything works fine that means our configurations are fine so let's move up to next is the posting a vendor invoice so before going to this let's take a practical example in accounts payable in accounts payable purchases are done through two way outs one way out is to purchase with the help of material or purchase department and another is purchasing directly by the finance or accounts department 
so when you, when in a material management or a purchase department sorry purchase department purchase any material there is a sequence there is a process that is what is termed as procure to pay cycle so a procure to pay cycle works how in that case first a purchase requisition is created where you make a request for purchase and when you make a request for purchase you take prices from a number of vendors that what are the different prices are quoted by different vendors then you final one vendor on the basis of the prices in the timeline and all those things and then you decide that this particular vendor will be given the quotation given the order so for that you make a purchase order once a purchase order is done and is given to vendor the vendor supplies you the goods and with the bill that is the invoice once you get the invoice the invoice is taken up in the sap system so the invoice is taken up with the reference to the purchase order so once you get the invoice in the sap system from the purchase department then you go and make the payment for that particular invoice and then what the cycle is completed but if we move to the next that is direct purchase or direct invoice booking in finance or accounts department that means that there is no purchase order at all the the vendor supplies you the things and he gives you the bill and those bills are directly punched into the accounts department and they are paid directly so these are two different scenarios right now we are doing the scenario which we are doing is only direct purchases by accounts and finance department because we cannot take the purchase department things right now because that involve material management module and that module is not a part of this particular syllabus so we will be first booking the vendor invoice directly for accounts and finance and then we will be processing the payment to that particular vendor and we will see how these things gets that's uh, reflected in the line item vendor line item display and the vendor balances and different reports for the same so first moving up to posting a vendor invoice fb60 you can see there is a path defined as well and at the same there is a transaction code by mistake in the transaction code is written wrong it's fb60 so there is a transaction code as well as the path so first we'll go to fb60 so moving to the sap screen we'll run the invoice booking that is fb60 slash n fb60 sorry the transaction code written is wrong it's fb60 enter so it will take you to the screen that is enter vendor invoice company code 1200 now to book an vendor invoice you would be needing certain ledger accounts like uh, you would be needing a, an inventory or a purchase ledger and then a vendor account for the same so did we have created any purchase ledger let's have a look to that let's go to the ledger right uh, look after the ledger that is um, the screen now moving to this we will we'll see that uh, a particular expense or a purchase account has been created or not fs00 to create a particular ledger let's have a look with f4 key the the list of all the ledger account whether there is any purchase ledger or not in that so purchase ledger is basically with the with the initial digit as 4 if you remember the expense digit if you don't remember you can go to the to the transaction slash o for a new session and o b d 4 and we can see the expense group for that matter you can remember that uh, the expense group starts with the 4 so we can go with the 4 and we can create a new one a new expense or a purchase ledger in that so for that we need to go over here as 4 so we'll be creating a new ledger over here for purchase account so it's a part of expense then profit and loss account then or even you can take okay let's take a purchase account P U R C H A C purchase account purchase account so moving next to the control data now it's we have taken this as an expense so we'll be taking only the line item and away we'll be taking all expenses for that we have to take a star selecting positive posting without line at text allowed then moving to the next 
will be taking whenever you book any expenses in SAP for expenses there is a separate filled status group that is cost account cost means all the cost all the expenses so whenever you, you create any expense ledger you have to take G004 as a filled status group so double clicking on this I am taking G004 because I am creating a, a GL for expense that is purchase account so I filled all those details now I can go to the save option and my ledger will be created it is purchase so once this has been purchased continue now you can see this has been created that is 4 5 times 0 this is the code I can go to my vendor invoice that is booking of vendor invoice over here and now I can book my invoice so to book my invoice the very first thing you have to do is you have to check your company code over here that is your company code correctly displayed if not you can go to this company code key uh, field over here click on it and you can change your company code from whatever is there to your own so it has been displayed now you can go to the vendor we will select the vendor with with the option search options over here so selecting okay now moving over here you can see this is the vendor so double click on this this the vendor is selected now everything is grayed out over here so what you have to do is you have to enter on the keyboard once you put an enter on the keyboard the next field will get opened up so over here you have to fill the invoice date invoice date is the purchase that which the vendor uh, the bill which has been reflect uh, shown to you the date on the on the bill so the date suppose is 25th October 2014 and now you are posting that bill on the SAP system on posting date that is 25th 29th but suppose if you want to put the same date you can put the same date as 25th 10 so once you put this date and put enter enter on the screen now your vendor is selected your date is selected over here now you can go to the next is your text if you have any text to write like uh, uh, you can write purchases from vendor so you can put over here as purchases from vendor and then you can move to this ledger account so this vendor what you have selected over here when you make any invoice posting entry the entry made is purchase accounts get debited and the vendor gets credited because vendor is a liability which has to be paid so this particular vendor will automatically get credited now but we have to select a debit over here so for selecting the debit we need to select the ledger which will be debited so we'll be selecting the ledger over here now that is the purchase account so we'll select the purchase ledger over here because we need to debit the purchases for this particular transaction and now the purchase has been debited you can put the amount over here suppose I have put the amount over here now I can go to next and you can put the text as well if you need if you wish to so suppose I put the purchases I have put up over here now you need to put the business area as well for every transactions you are supposed to put the business area so your business area you can get it with F4 key you can get the list and from that you can select it suppose I select 1230 that is product 3 so 1230 is the purchase business area will be displayed over here so that has been done now I can go to the simulation tab and enter and we'll see the entry will get okay we need to put an amount so we have put the amount over here but we have not put the amount over here so we need to put that amount over here as well so I have put the amount next is you can go to this payment tab over here we need to put the enter the payment term what payment term do you want to follow so to see the payment terms you can go to this search options again what are the payment terms already defined in the SAP system out of these you can take any of the payment terms for example suppose I take immediately because I need to check the payment process as well so I have to take the immediate 
option as a payment term so i have selected this immediate part now moving up to next is after putting this you can go to this simulate so as to simulate the document how the entry will be posted in the screen in the sap system so enter so you can see the entry displayed is the tcs posting key is 31 so for vendor the posting key always comes up as 31 31 means the vendor is credited and this particular 4040 means debit so this ledger account is getting debited so once you click on this post this transaction will get posted on the SAP system and a number will be generated on the footer so you can see the number generated is 19000000 if you want you can go back and you can have a look at this invoice how if you remember in the G ledger accounting we have read FB03 to display a document so to display a document you need to go to FB03 and we put this particular document number there and we can enter and we can display it so that is 19000000 company code is 1200 and the fiscal year is 2014 enter and when you enter on the screen the entry is displayed over here so you can see this now over here there are few things you must have to notice down that is this is a ledger account but this thesis is a vendor vendor means a sub ledger and for a sub ledger the posting key used is 31 so now if this is basically an entry view if you if you, you can read this data entry view over here this is entry view means what we enter is been viewed to you on this particular transaction but if i want to know this particular vendor has uh, the amount has gone to which actual ledger so the actual ledger is which has been assigned in the tds in the vendor master that is go to general ledger view so it has the tcs uh, amount has gone to this particular ledger that is vendor domestic vendor part so this is how you can check that part as well so this is for displaying a document in the sap system now we will move moving to the next part we have posted an invoice now we'll make a payment to the vendor so to make a payment we have to go to the transaction code f-53 for in day-to-day -day purposes you must know these basic transactions these are a very commonly used transaction in the sap system so We'll go to the FDS 53 transaction. This transaction is used for mainly for payment, and this is termed as a manual payment procedure. And in this, we clear the open items. Open item means the vendor line item, that is the vendor document which has been posted just a while back. While making the payment, we clear that in invoice from the system. Sometimes you want to make an immediate payment to a single vendor. In such a case, this is a faster method of making payment rather than executing the payment program. So you can pay an invoice based on an immediate requirement where you don't want to wait for next payment run or you want to pay an invoice from the bank account that is not relevant for an automatic payment program. So we go for this particular payment. Let's move to the screen F-53. Enter. Now you have to fill these details. First we'll be filling up the document date. Suppose I take the document date as uh, of today. That is 29th October 2014 posting date will also remain the same now we can go below over here to come you have to fill the company code so company code is already coming correctly the currency is also coming correctly if otherwise you need to fill it now moving up to the bank over here you need to select the bank account in account part so if is there any bank created in the SAP in the SAP, this for this particular company code let's go and check so there is a bank already created like bank and as well as the bank city bank suppose i make the payment to this particular vendor with the with bank hsbc so i will select the bank hsbc and we'll select the amount as well over here and the business area as well so the business area which we selected was while posting the invoice so the same 
business area should be selected over here otherwise the reports will go wrong so it was 12:30, and again i have selected the business area over here is 12:30, and the amount need to be posted over here the amount in the invoice was if you don't know you can put one and later on we can come back and we can put the correct amount over here or if you remember the amount you can put the same amount over here now we'll select the vendor at this particular field so while selecting vendor you need to go to the search and with search you will select the vendor code so going to this ok now we'll select to the vendor part that is double click on this the vendor is selected now we can go to the process open item so process open okay tax relevant account not defined in this okay tax relevant accounts are not defined please correct okay let me check so once you have filled these details on the screen that is the document date company code posting date currency then reference if their reference is used basically for putting the invoice number so suppose there is an invoice number one 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 zero so you can put the invoice number as a reference for future references then the account has to be filled that is the bank account with which we are making the payment then the amount how much amount of payment we are making to the particular vendor and then uh, we'll go to this vendor account where we'll be selecting the vendor code or vendor account so after selecting these we have to go to this process open item now process open item will particularly shows you the invoices pending in the vendor master account so there is one particular invoice that is 10,000 is already there which has to be paid so 10,000 we is taken but if you remember the amount entered was one in the previous screen so we need to correct that so we'll go to this screen document overview you can go to this and you can put the same amount as 10,000 and now we can go to this process open item again and you can see now this that this and this is equal to zero why because there is a rule in accounting that debit should be equal to credit so until debit is equal to credit you cannot post any transactions so once you have selected the invoices from here and you moved over here so if you select if you can see this is in blue line uh, blue the number are reflected in blue so if you double click on this that means it will become black that means it's deselected and the amount has become zero so when you double click on this it will get reselected again and it has been updated over here that means this invoice has been paid with that with the bank so once you have selected everything correctly then you can go to the over here to document on the header top and you can simulate from over here the document now when you simulate this entry will be generated over here where the bank account is credited that is minus sign is there means bank is credited or 50 posting key means credited 25 is the posting key for cus for vendor payment so the vendor has been paid that means the vendor is debited and the bank has been credited once the entry is okay from your side you can go to post or otherwise you can go back and exit the entry so i will be going and will be posting this document so, so the document is posted and a new number has been generated that is 15000000 now if you want to display this particular document again you can go to this display over here and a document can be displayed otherwise you can go to FB03 and you can display from there as well so now you can see the document generated is document number generated is with the initials of 15 and if you remember when we created the number range for vendor payment we created with 15 why because the document type for vendor payment was KZ so for KZ we defined the number range that was 15 and that is what has been assigned and the number has been generated. So from easily you can remember that 15 document number starts with 15 is a vendor payment. So we have made the vendor payment now means we have covered the invoice pay, booking of invoice and then the payment as well. Now we can go to FBL 1N and we can see the line items. So slash n fbl one n. I can go to this open item. In open item, you will not find anything because right now we have just cleared those items with the payment. So you can go to all items, and now you can execute. You can see that an invoice and then the payment have been cleared to each other. 
so this is what how it, it works that is the document number is over here you can see the first we booked the invoice KR that is invoice booking and then later on we made the payment over here so when we make the payment the line item gets cleared that the open line item gets cleared with the payment even we discussed earlier as well open items open item means any transaction which is not complete which is part wise like once you make a book a vendor invoice until you make the payment of that invoice the transaction the whole cycle is not completed so once you book an invoice an invoice always remain as open once you make the payment it get cleared with the invoice and that is why these all are reflecting over here as clearing document over here with the same key and always the clearing item will display with this green green color over here and you can see even it's reflecting cleared so this is how vendor line item balance is displayed once this has been done even you can go and you can check with the uh, with the balance as well you can see the next transaction is fk 10n for vendor balance so to check the vendor balance you can go to fk 10n enter now when you enter okay slash n fk 10n so over here also you can go and you can check the balances execute now in this case you can see that in the month of October there is a debit entry of 10,000 there is a credit entry of 10,000 because we booked an invoice at the same time we made a payment so ultimately the the balance has become zero over here but there was a purchase of 10,000 if you remember so it is why in the purchase it is reflecting 10,000 so this is how it reflects your balance if there would be any any differences in debit credit the balance would be reflected over here so this is how you look after your closing balances from this as per period wise if you need for different period you can even uh, have those report from over here so this is your vendor balance report with fk 10 n moving to the next there are certain different other reports as well from SAP side these are the other reports where you can run suppose I copy this report from over here and I can I can go to this slash n and I can paste the transaction over here these are certain different SAP reports the transaction code is slightly long but these are a specific designs report by SAP itself uh, we can put this over here and now enter so while entering you can see vendor balance in local currency so if you want you can 1200 company code if you want to have for any specific vendor you can put the vendor or else you can run for all as well so if I run for all and I click over here as execute then all the vendor reports will come even for which particular period you want this report you can put that period as well from and to and that particular period balances will be reflected to you over here so selecting this now I can see in this there is only one vendor as we have created only one vendor as of now so what you can do is you can create number of vendors and can do number of transactions in them keep a uh, few invoices as pending don't make the payment and then see how the value is reflected even after making the payment how the values reflect so you need to do all those these number of transactions to a particular vendor or couple of vendors and then you can see how those reports are reflected in values are reflected in these particular reports so that is what you need to do and the report will come in this way so if there are any any number of vendors for that matter if they are 100 or 150 or 200 doesn't matter all these vendor balances will be reflected line item wise or row wise in this so in this you also find the reconciliation account as well so this vendor is assigned to this ledger means all these entries goes to this ledger from the vendor so this is what the report is then in the same way there are other reports like master list so we created the vendor master so those vendor master can be looked with this report so you have to run slash n and then copy the report over here or write the code over here enter so you can from this you can have uh, the different uh, vendor details of the vendor master so we have need to put the company code and you can execute it so it will give you the vendor master reports like vendor master that is vendor is this it's uh, 
service account group is there it was created by user 10 and created on 29th of October the language is English the company name is TCS the address is 211 New York United States so these are the details which you have filled in the vendor master while creating the vendor master will be reflected in this reports so this is what in the same way you can go if you need address you can run a separate report like this for that slash n to exit this screen and then you can put your own transaction list next report which you want to run enter so now entering this will come over here is like this you can put the vendor code over here for which you want the address for or else you can run for all without filling any vendor code and execute it so while executing it will ask enter so this will show you in such sim such like such over here alv and L will give you a better view of this this has came up for all the vendors which is there in this particular client so if you need for a specific vendor you need to go back and you need to fill over here again uh, moving up there is nothing else okay so you need to select your vendor over here and then only you can have those particular part taken up so my vendor was TCS if I remember so I can put over here as TCS and I can search for that so my vendor was this double click on this and this is what is selected over here and I can execute it now this will show me the address of this particular vendor so I can go to this ALV for a view for a better view so this shows you the vendor code the vendor name street country postal code location and all so this is a report for that the same way you can go to these report as well like due date forecast slash and exit now I can assign again the next report over here control V and then we can put an enter now over here you can have a another report for due date forecast means when how much payment is becoming due the due date can be filled over here you want to see how much amount is coming due in 8 days how much amount is due in 30 days to the vendor means the payment which has to be made to the vendor so executing this we can see this report but there is no data as of now uh, that is why we cannot have much of the uh, report status uh, when you will have a huge number of data in the vendors a huge number of business transactions then only you can able to understand this report right now there is no value reflected so once you do a number of transactions huge number of transactions then you can run this report and have a look on this the next is so coming to the next last report this is the most important report in today's um, requirements and every client ask for this report mind it this is a latest new report in accounts payable by SAP itself s underscore s ac0 underscore 52000888 enter now this gives you okay the report definition can oh, can be found okay yes would be imported okay Give me a second. So, this is the report, and this re this report you have to put the company code. Now, once you will be doing controlling, then you will be able to help understand better about this that you can have reports on the basis of profit centers, segments, cost centers, business areas, wise. Oh, sorry, and you can have all those things, all those uh, details from this particular report. So, to have those things from that particular report, you can use this part. You can go to this tab and over here suppose I need I have got three business areas as we have created for product 1 product 2 and product 3 I want the report only for one particular business area you can go to this business area and you can double click on it so when you double click on this over here the pop-up will come for business area so you can put your business area for which you want the vendor balances 
only. So suppose I write uh, take select it from F4. I want to see for product three. So I have to double click on this one two three zero my business area and I will run only for that. So to put this and then you have to go to the save option, save and then now you can execute it or you can even execute with all items and now you can click on this execute. So right now we have only one vendor report is being processed. Okay, there is some problem with this. So this will work. This report will work only once we will have numerous transactions in the uh, in the accounts payable. So once you will have all number of transactions in the screen, then only you can go for doing this particular or running this particular report. At times, uh, report doesn't work when you don't have any data on the SAP system. So you need to do a lot of transactions and once you will be done with a lot of transactions in number of vendors then you can run all these reports and you can see how the values flows on these. So these are some of the very helpful reports in SAP which every user, every organization needs on day to day basis. So that is what we have covered with the accounts payable today and now will be taking up accounts receivable in the next training session. Thank you for now and practice hard. Thank you.